Caveman Murph here. We're going to do a review today of my new spit. I, uh, I ordered a spit from a company called R-Grill in Germany. Um, I'm doing this review because I, don't, I couldn't find a review anywhere, no matter what I did. I searched YouTube, Instagram, you name it. There was a lot of literature on the actual uh, spit itself, but it was all created by our grill. There were no user reviews, no user uh, videos of it being used. And these are the kind of videos that I rely on to do my shopping and purchase my products. So I decided I wanted to do uh, a video for this uh, particular item so that other people could see uh, the quality of this device and decide if it's right for them. Um, I enjoy outdoor cooking. Uh, my wife is Filipino, so she and her family and all Filipinos are big into cooking pigs outside. They call it lechon. Um, and I decided that I was gonna cook my first pig on a spit outside over a, a, a pit. So I needed a spit in order to do that. I could have made one, I have the tools, but I decided that I wanted to spend more time getting ready for the activity than building this device. Um, so I'm going to do an unboxing um, and talk about our grills, uh, our grills product. Uh, this is not a professional review. Uh, there will be mistakes. I may stutter. But that's not the point. The point is, is getting the information that others need uh, so that they can make uh, wise decisions in their purchasing. Um, so the name of this device is an R-Grill Rotisserie Spit XXL. Um, and it comes with uh, the, I bought the upgrade that included the two X forks for, uh, cooking smaller uh, pieces of game like chickens or fowl. Um, so we'll get started. Here was the box that came in. Uh, it shipped from Germany. Um, it took about a week. Um, one of the, the fears I had is that maybe this company wasn't real. Uh, they've been on the internet for uh, about six years or more. But again, there wasn't a single, like even text review for this company. So it really baffled me. Was this a fake company? Um, was it, you know, some Chinese entity collecting credit cards? But part of me said that, um, you know, that wouldn't be true because they don't normally last six years, they last six days. Um, so I, I reached out to the, to the manufacturer. I did get a response. So uh, prior to making this video, I have been in contact with the manufacturer, but this is not a paid review. Um, so again, it came in the box. It took about six, seven days. Once FedEx picked it up, it took two, three days to, to get picked up. I'm sure that uh, th this is not an urban company. So they had to wait for FedEx. They probably had to package it, things like that. Um, so it took about 10 days or so total uh, once the order was placed uh, online. It was a very professional setup. Um, I put in my credit card, I requested the materials that I needed, and within seconds, um, the order was completed. Um, I had several emails, one from the, the German shipper, one from FedEx, uh, one from the company with a receipt and an invoice, um, and uh, it was very professional. So uh, that made me really excited, again, considering I had a lot of doubt in the beginning. Um, at, at least I felt like if it was a scam, boy, they were doing a good job. Um, but it arrived. Uh, the first thing is, is it came in a small box. Um, so I'll get started here and opening it up. Um, it was uh, it, it wasn't packed in a lot of packing. Um, as you can see. Um, but a lot of the parts are metal, so there's not a lot of uh, things inside the box that can be destroyed. Probably should have had a little more um, packing, but it, it wasn't a showstopper. Um, 
First thing I want to say is that it, the, the, the device didn't come with any instructions. Um, again, not a showstopper. I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, anybody with any kind of mechanical aptitude of any caliber is going to have no problem um, putting this uh, device together. Um, so the first thing I see in the box are my two uh, X forks that I purchased extra. They're an extra add-on. They're like 50 bucks. Um, but this is for smaller pieces of meat or smaller pieces of game. Um, so that was the first thing in the box. The next thing in the box was um, the backbone support and the two um, shank. Uh, we'll go ahead and open this up. And, and the two shank forks uh, for the rear shank and the uh, forward shoulder shank. Um, so again, uh, a backbone support. We have here uh, two shoulder or shank forks for, for, the, for the upper shoulders and right in here are the shoulder areas where, where you're going to pierce the animal. Um, so that, that comes stock with the, with the package. Um, so let's talk about packaging. So you see uh, things are wrapped in saran wrap um, just to keep parts from floating around in the box. Again, not, not a lot of super packing, but at least they're keeping parts together so they don't float around or get lost if the box cracks. Uh, the next thing we see inside the box is uh, a European to American 110 volt adapter. We'll talk about that later. The next thing we see in the box, again, we'll quickly unwrap it, is um, the spit supports themselves. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, any good spit is gonna have bearings. So we have, uh, right here is, is where it, 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 it attaches to the shafts. And you'll see here that there are two bearings for it to ride on. Um, very well built. Um, these are uh, good closed seal bearings. Um, I, I, I mean, again, they're not million dollar bearings, but uh, they're, they're very smooth, very well constructed. Um, the way they're attached is, is well too. Um, good welds. We'll talk about the welding a little bit later. So there's two of those, one for each side. The next thing we see is the uh, motor adapter here um, that goes on the post. We'll talk about that later. The next thing in the box is a uh, piece of uh, all thread bolt. So at first I wondered what this was, but I had to think about it a little bit. Turns out that this is the manual um, crank. You can put this in through the hole where it attaches to the motor and you can manually turn the spit if you have a problem with the motor or you want to do manual mode. So again, we can talk about that a little bit more later. Um, next thing we see here is the motor. And uh, they put their sticker on it. Um, it looks like this box was manufactured by the company. This is, uh, you know, something made in house. I can just tell by the way it's constructed. Um, let's talk about what we have inside. So we have a Kamo. This is an Italian um, uh, Eastern Bloc company uh, out of Europe. Uh, so the cable uh, was bought separate from that and then attached to the motor. Inside of here, You'll find an Italian-made uh, Bitron motor. Uh, it's a 110-volt motor, probably series-wound for high torque. Um, and it has an all-metal gearbox, very important to um, spitting and rotisserieing uh, heavy meat. Um, if this was plastic and you put a 100-pound pig on that, um, you'd probably strip it out in a matter of seconds. Um, so again, big props to the company for their selection of the, the gear. Um, 
I don't think Bitron is like the Ferraris of geared, uh, slow speed geared motors, uh, but they're certainly a good and probably well manufactured motor. So it was nice to see uh, a quality motor in this bit and not a Chinese piece of junk. So that was uh, very comforting. Moving on here, um, the next thing we get out of the box is the actual spit itself. So let's talk about this a little bit. So it turns out that this is uh, probably a 308. Oh wait, it's 304. So this is 304 stainless steel. It's marked on the metal itself. Um, it's a high gauge. <clears throat> Taking it out here. Uh, you'll see here it's a high gauge uh, cold rolled stainless steel. Um, it's been well, uh, well machined. Uh, they put the connection hole here, and you'll see that uh, again some craftsmanship has gone into this. They've, they've, uh, when they drilled the hole, they've then uh, uh, beveled around it with a with a hand tool to make it nice and smooth. There's no rough edges. Same with this connection point here. Um, you'll find the end of the spit. This has been welded and then cleaned very well. Uh, and smooth, so you have a nice uh, piercing point uh, for your um, for your piece of meat. So that's uh, that half of the the spit. Moving on, we'll go to the other side again. Removing the saran wrap. Uh, you'll find a the connection point here, and we have the. Uh, we have a stainless steel um, bolt to connect the two pieces together. Um, and then we have a smaller but similar gauged uh, spacer transition piece that's welded to the inside um, of this so that we guarantee that it doesn't move. Um, and they've put plenty of meat here for the connection so that we don't, um, you know, so that it doesn't bend or come apart mid, mid cook. Um, again, on the other side, we have well machined edge again, and we have the holes where we're going to connect to the motor later on. Uh, the second video in this series will be me assembling this so everyone can see how it goes together. Um, and we can talk about, um, you know, how some of these pieces go together. Um, I will say this, that, you know, this is definitely handmade. This is not a machine that does this. You can see the, uh, the deburring that they've done here. Um, it's not even, but the good news is, is that it's, it's well done. Um, you know, again, it wasn't a, a crappy uh, hole that's been drilled and left all that uh, metal and, and everything to cut your fingers on or to start causing problems. So you can tell that there's a lot of care that's been taken uh, as this was manufactured. So that's good to know. So we have this bit. Uh, the next thing we have are the two posts. Um, we'll talk about how those go together here in just a second. Uh, I gotta get my saran wrap off. So the next thing we have here are these um, these posts. So the way they're done is they they are um, there's some square stock here um, where they've uh, cut them and then welded them on. Um, and we have a, a tripod configuration here, and uh, you're gonna put the feet in here, and uh, this is what your your um, this is what your, your bearings are going to be on and what you'll rest the spit on later on. So we have two of those. Um, and finally, in the box, we have the, um, the six legs. I won't, I won't um, unwrap them, but you can see we have the legs here. So again, this is uh, all made from basic metals. These are not uh, custom fabricated pieces, you know, to have... Uh, uh, sexy shapes or anything. This is all off-the-shelf metal again, which is good because if I were to build this it probably look exactly the same um, So let's talk some more uh, one of the things the manufacturer did 
is um, they have a lot of literature bragging about their uh, the way their work is um, because um, you know they they want to be they want to stand out as one of the best spit makers out there, especially for handcrafted spits. Um, so uh, again, all of the pieces that touch food are all 304 stainless steel. So this back plate does come with a piece of stainless steel um, backing here. The nuts are stainless steel. The thread, the all thread here is stainless steel. Again, all hand, um, all hand um, machined. So these are, you know, deburred and everything by hand. Um, but back to them bragging on their website, one of the things they talk about um, is the welding that they do and the fact that their welds are um, much better than the Chinese welds. You, if you had this same piece from the Chinese companies that are selling tons, um, there's tons of them on Amazon, you'll see that there's probably just a dot of weld on this same piece. Um, so I did inspect these welds, um, if you can see, and um, the, one of the things they did is they bragged about penetration. Um, the penetration's okay. Uh, if you look on the inside, you can definitely see, and it's hard on the camera, you can definitely see where uh, it has penetrated the back side of the metal. That's good. That shows that we're getting good, um, good metal to metal contact. Uh, we definitely want, we don't want cold welds. Um, I did find that out of the four welds on this, um, that three of them do have full penetration. Um, but this one right here is slightly cold. Um, we don't have um, full melting of the, the, the piece of circular stock here. Um, it definitely, you know, heated it up on the back side. Um, it definitely made penetration to the to the all thread, but I don't have a hundred percent penetration um, To the wall of the circular stock here um, The welds are probably triple the size of what you find on the Chinese junk um, So this is good, um, you know, definitely good welding uh, this nut on top um, For for the the, the stock piece to, to uh, hold it to, to the to the spit. Um, that weld on the nut for, for this thread is uh, pretty pretty penetrative. Uh, we certainly have good penetration there, and uh, certainly good coverage. Uh, so that was good to see. So um, uh, before we go on to the next video, which will be the assembly, uh, some final notes on this and that is that um, uh, because it is handmade uh, you will not you, you do find a lot of uh, shall we say garage based uh, solutions for example all of the um, all of the connections that the way you tighten them is by using an actual hardware store bolt and a piece of and, and an actual nut um, that's been welded onto the metal uh, versus actually machining metal and then threading that metal and making a, a perfectly machined part. Um, so they've taken household items such as nuts and bolts and stock, uh, uh, stock pieces of metal like cold rolled um, stainless steel and combined them to make an actual device. Uh, so again, this is both uh, a positive and a negative. It's negative in that um, it isn't something that's designed and machined highly uh, by CNC machines and, and, and other manufacturing machines. Um, but it's also good because again, it's highly handmade. Um, and a lot of backyard cookers like me, um, that's a good thing. We're, we're not looking for the uh, you know Cadillac based stuff. Um, we like the fact that it's been homemade because the food we're, we're making is, is homemade and not made and put in a package and then in the freezer. So it actually, uh, uh, it plays into the theme a, a lot in that um, this is built with household items and off the shelf items to create um, something that will help us, you know, um, 
cook good food without paying a lot of money. And, and that too, it does play into the cost. Uh, this device was, was a little more expensive than, than the Chinese Amazon offerings, um, but probably a quarter of the cost if this was you know, designed in, in CAD and, and again, used all kinds of CNC machines and everything was threaded with automated robots and things like that. Um, yeah, this would be quite expensive if we did that. So, um, wanted to, to go uh, about that. Um, the other thing I want to highlight here as we inspect parts, um, so the posts are uh, regular um, stock mild steel, again, cold rolled. Um, uh, they did a pretty good job. This is um, a, uh, what appears to be a, um, you know, a good powder coat um, coating. Um, it, it, it's definitely going to withstand the weather and it's going to, you know, keep the metal from rusting. Um, it's not painted on the inside, so you, there's already actually some, some uh, surface rust from just the environment, um, which is normal with all mild steel that hasn't been protected properly. Um, but uh, th this is good. We're, this is definitely not going to turn into, you know, a, a red piece of rust bucket um, anytime soon. The bad news is, is that um, when we do put these uh, pieces on like this, um, you know, for the motor here, or even better, because that piece doesn't lock on. But we have this piece here, and as I said, um, we have the locking uh, screws here. Um, once I put this on here, um, I slide it down like this, and then I lock it in. Um, we're going to have to give that a good turn, right? And when I give that a good turn, my problem is, is that now I'm going to score this good powder coat. Um, so we are going to put some marks. It is going to expose the mild steel. Um, again, I don't see it as a showstopper. Uh, but, you know, after many, many years, you're going to find that this is going to be powder coat rust, powder coat rust everywhere you have little notches um, from tightening down whatever level you're at. The other thing I wanted to point out, too, that I wasn't too thrilled about is that uh, all of the stuff that's powder coated um, is also made out of mild steel. Um, this, this screw that holds down the bearing... Um, it's hard to tell. I can't tell whether if this is a, a, galvan, a galvanized um, nut or not, but time will tell whether if this is going to rust or not. The bad news about that is, is if that does rust over time and you're not using it constantly or you're not put a, a couple drops of oil, which is what I'm probably going to do, um, you might find it really hard to be adjusting these bearing pieces. Um, about all these pieces, um, but I wanted to go through and tell you what I found in the box. Uh, the next video I make will be of me assembling everything. Oh yeah, one last thing. So I did want to tell you that um, this does come with the European plug. Um, that's probably uh, not great for Americans, but they did send a 110 converter. Um, the good news is that this is a 110 volt motor. So the, the cool thing is, is that if I want to just change the end, uh, change the end on this, I can, and that would eliminate this. Um, but for the first few cooks, we'll use this just so that we do have power. Um, but if you're, if you're uh, capable enough, you can change your, your plug so that it has the proper end on it. Um, Again, I think that's going to end it for this unboxing. Uh, we'll talk to you next time when, uh, when we do the assembly. Thank you.